Have you heard the story of the Rattlesnake King? He was a cowboy named Clark Stanley. In 1879, he became an apprentice of sorts to a medicine man who belonged to the Hopi tribe in Arizona. It was during this time that he learned the secret healing power of snake oil. You see, many cultures use snake oil to treat ailments. In fact, Chinese railroad workers back in the 1800s used the oil made from Chinese water snakes to help alleviate the debilitating pain caused from the repetitive motions of laying down railroad tracks. And to some extent, the snake oil may have actually worked. Some medical professionals today believe that the high concentration of omega-3 fatty acids in the snake oil may have in fact relieved the pain. But then came along the Rattlesnake King. Clark Stanley got an idea. What if I could bottle the snake oil and sell it to the masses? And he did. But it turns out that Clark Stanley didn't have access to Chinese water snakes. So he improvised and used rattlesnake oil instead. In a public gathering, Stanley once pulled a live snake out of a sack, showed it to the audience, and dropped it in boiling water. When the snake's fat rose to the top, he skimmed it and branded it Stanley's snake oil. He advertised it as being the cure for everything. But Stanley's snake oil didn't contain any snake oil at all. Instead, he made his miracle drug with mineral oil and other fillers. And that's where we get the expression, snake oil salesman. Medical fraud is nothing new. It happened way before Clark Stanley, and it will continue to happen as long as we're around. Today's snake oil comes in the form of homeopathic elixirs that are passed as food. Therefore, these off-label supplements don't require any FDA approval before being sold. Some are harmless, and some are plain dangerous. I've covered these kinds of snake oil scams before. People forcing bleach enemas on their children to cure autism and all kinds of health issues. But today with COVID-19, we're seeing a spike in charlatans promising the cure for the novel coronavirus. Today, I'm gonna to talk to a woman who actually takes one of these miracle drugs to cure COVID-19. I wanna know why does she believe in this stuff? I'm Javier Leva, and this is Pretend. Real stories about people pretending to be someone else. So who's pushing these miracle drugs? It's the skeptics who shun traditional medicine and resort to homeopathic treatments. So I've been getting a ton of questions about the potential use of molecular hydrogen for the COVID-19. But they're using molecular hydrogen to treat the COVID-19 patients. You also have the misinformed. Then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or, or... But then you have the worst of the worst. People who are blatantly trying to profit from a pandemic, like this guy. This is Keith Middlebrook. Yes, I traded the cure that shuts down the COVID-19. This genius is Keith Middlebrook. He says he has a cure for the COVID-19. What an idiot. Middlebrook is a Hollywood extra who moonlights as an epidemiologist. Here's a video taken off his Instagram page. It makes the cells from the coronavirus detach, release, and die within 48 hours. This is it right here, the preloaded injection. Not only was he selling pre-filled injections, he's also pushing pills that would build immunity against COVID-19. For any of you wondering, there is no cure for COVID-19. 
at least not yet. Researchers are currently developing more than 125 coronavirus vaccines. Some of them are being tested in human trials, too. But none of them, I repeat, none of them have been approved. But if you talk to Middlebrook, he might tell you otherwise. I've been studying cell tissue and chemical biology for well over two decades. I'm beyond qualified. I think omniscient. It's pronounced omniscient, Einstein. Can you believe this guy has 2.4 million Instagram followers? The FBI arrested Keith Middlebrook in March and charged him with one count of attempted wire fraud and a potential 20-year prison sentence. Then there's Alex Jones of InfoWars. Despite being banned from YouTube for spreading lies and misinformation, he still gets about 10 million monthly views. I'm not going to belabor this. Uh, I'm just going to tell you that for just your daily life and your gums and your teeth and for regular viruses and bacteria, the patented nano silver we have, the Pentagon has come out and documented and Homeland Security and said this stuff kills the whole SARS corona family at point blank range. Well, of course it does. It kills every virus. <laughs> but it's, they found that. And then this, is a, this is 13 years ago. And the Pentagon uses the product we have, the, the nano uh, silver toothpaste in the super blue with the tea tree and the iodine. That's the super blue is amazing. And then we have the whitening toothpaste that has the nano silver uh, and a lot more as well. Those are both excellent. They're at InfoWarsStore.com. They're still discounted despite all the hell breaking loose. Blue silver corona killing toothpaste approved by the Pentagon? Hmm, yummy. And it's on sale too. But nothing sells the cure for the novel coronavirus better than Jesus. In the name of Jesus! Oh, thank you, Jesus. This is televangelist Kenneth Copeland, who summoned the wind of God to destroy the virus. I execute judgment on you, COVID-19! I execute judgment on you, Satan! Copeland even asked people to attend in person so he could heal them right then and there. You will destroy through COVID-19. No more! No more! No more! And then there's this guy. Welcome to the Jim Baker Show. Televangelist Jim Baker. Jim Baker is not your typical con man. He's much more dangerous. He's not a street hustler trying to pull a fast one on you. Oh, no. He's going to separate you from your money, and you're going to thank him afterwards. But Jim Baker has always been a con man. Why are we talking about him now, you ask? Because a pandemic is a con man's Super Bowl, and he's been preparing for this crisis for years. Here's a clip of Jim Baker back in 2011. The bird flu was going around the world, and people were really concerned. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our house, and welcome back, Dr. Gordon Pedersen. Yes, we are so happy to have you, Dr. Pedersen. A man who is uh, amazing man of the medicine, but man of science. And we're going to talk about today, I know this seems strange, but there is breaking news on the swine flu, the bird flu. And we have uh, one of the leading doctors of the world. And I'm going to read to you what he says. If this thing mutates with the bird flu and the swine flu together, mm. what he would do. Wow. And it's going to shock you. He set the stage. The virus is coming and it could be bad. Then he hits his audience with this parable from Revelations. The Bible tells us an influenza will take place. A disease from the animals will kill a fourth of the world in the last days. One of the four horses of the apocalypse. Jim Baker just painted a bleak picture for us. Not only is the virus deadly... It's spread by the birds, and the birds fly over all walls and borders. It's also a sign of the apocalypse. So what can we do? If you don't have silver saw, you need to order it today. And uh, I just ordered two 50 uh, cases of the large gel, and we're offering that for just 900 is that? Yes. What can I say? Fear sells. Jim Baker has made a business from doomsday prophecies. So when COVID-19 came around, you better believe that he had the cure readily available. This influenza that is now circling the globe, you're saying that 
silver solution would be effective? Well, let's say it hasn't been tested on this strain of the coronavirus, but it's been tested on other strains yeah. of the coronavirus and has been uh, able to eliminate it within 12 hours. Yeah. Totally yeah. eliminate it, kills it, and deactivates it. Yeah. Now, to be fair to the woman in this video, Cheryl Selman, she clearly stated that this collodio silver product Jim Baker is holding in his hand has not been tested on this strain of COVID-19. However, it's pretty clear that she wants the viewers to read between the lines. If it kills other strains of coronavirus, surely it would kill this strain of coronavirus. But before we dig into this collodio silver and its dangers, let's refresh our memory. Who is this Jim Baker guy? And should we trust him or anything he sells? For that, I turn to my friend, a concerned citizen and host of Swindled Podcast. My name is aka a concerned citizen. I am the anonymous writer, producer, and host of Swindled, which is a true crime podcast about white collar criminals, con artists, and corporate evil. So you covered this topic, Jim Baker, on Swindled, right? So tell me about Jim Baker. Who is he? Jim Baker is a televangelist who grew to prominence in the 1970s and early 80s. And uh, he and his wife, Tammy Faye Baker, created their own TV show called the Praise the Lord Club or the PTL Club. And that eventually basically grew into a Christian entertainment empire. At their peak, they were collecting more than $120 million a year from its 13 million viewers. It actually became the second largest employer in Charlotte, North Carolina, where they were based. They had their own satellite network. They had a massive headquarters there. They had private jets flying them to various vacation homes around the country. Yet it was really never quite enough for Jim Baker. But Jim Baker, he wanted more. What did he do next? Heritage USA is, you know, Jim Baker's master vision of this Christian themed amusement park um, that was going to be built in South Carolina somewhere. He, the original estimate for to build the park and the accommodations was about $25 million. And even though PTO as a company was worth almost a billion dollars at this point, Jim Baker started soliciting donations from his viewers to, to build this theme park. And even when he had collected enough money to fund the project, Baker kept asking his viewers for more. He was selling what he called lifetime partnerships for about $1,000 each which guaranteed three nights of free lodging at Heritage USA every year for the rest of the buyer's life. And in total, Jim Baker raised over $158 million from about 150,000 people. So, <laughs> it, it, almost, it almost sounds like, uh, like a pyramid scheme. Exactly. Well, it wasn't really a pyramid because he wasn't, you know. <laughs> he was on top. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, he wasn't really. Uh, there were no money. layers. <laughs> exactly. The media kind of realized that and they, it caught their attention. So they began to dig inside the rest of his business and they discovered that he had failed to deliver on some international commitments he had made for which he had raised hundreds of thousands of dollars. Did he get away with it? Yeah. So the Federal Communications Commission, you know, came knocking at his door. They're the FCC. And they sent him a subpoena to testify at a closed hearing. And this was a big deal because the FCC has the power to revoke his broadcasting license, which is his bread and butter. And it would essentially destroy his scam or his business, whatever you want to call it. But at the end of the day, nothing happened. Wow. You know, the year after the FCC investigation, the IRS actually wanted to perform an audit on his books as well. And they found that $13 million in revenue had incomplete accounting records and Jim Baker's salary was doubling every year with these massive bonuses. Baker actually explained the discrepancies by saying, quote, the devil got into his computer. And uh, yet again, nothing happened with the IRS and nothing would happen for another six years. But Jim Baker's troubles were far from over, right? Um, it was reported that in 1980, Jim Baker and a fellow preacher had lured this 21-year-old church secretary named Jessica Hahn to a hotel room in Florida, and they drugged and raped her. Baker claimed the sex was consensual, but when the encounter became public, Jim and Tammy Faye resigned from their positions at PTL. And then even more allegations involving Jim arose, things like wife swapping and closeted homosexuality and embezzlement. And so eventually in December 1988, Baker was charged with defrauding the public through the sale of thousands of those lifetime partnerships to Heritage USA, which were found to be impossible to honor, basically. 
considering 153,000 of them have been sold and Heritage USA only had 258 rooms available. So tell me, how does it all end for Jim Baker? He was convicted of 23 counts of fraud and one count of conspiracy, for which he was sentenced to 45 years in prison and a $500,000 fine. Um, his Baker's sentence was later reduced to eight years in 1991, but he only served five. And he, when he got out, he picked, he picked up right where he left off, except he had a new wife because Tammy Faye had filed for divorce in 1992, and I believe she died in 2007. And that's kind of where your show leaves off. We thought maybe that was the last we heard of him, but no, he picked up back up and started the Jim Baker show. And now his focus has kind of changed, right? He's more into the end of time prophecies. Yeah. From what I can tell, he was selling, you know, buckets of pancake batter and stuff, you know, yeah, like doomsday prepping stuff. He was selling appliances, microwaves, stuff that you, you would need for the end of the world, which he preaches is coming every single day. It's true. Jim Baker is back with a new television ministry in Missouri. And he has everything you need to make the apocalypse feel a little less apocalyptic. His 50-day survival food sampler bucket contains 154 meals. They're delicious. Just ask Jim Baker. I want to eat some more of this if you're not careful. Here's Jim scooping a glob of his creamy potato soup from his five-gallon bucket. Oh. He takes a sip. Mm. Mm. It, oh, good. Oh, my God. <clears throat> Jim Baker has a pretty long record of being a charlatan. So when he started selling colloidal silver on his show and claiming it was a cure for COVID-19, he drew some unwanted attention. The Office of Attorney General of New York ordered him to stop advertising silver as a cure for COVID-19. Then the Federal Trade Commission and the FDA sent him a letter warning him to stop. On top of that, the Missouri Attorney General sued Baker and his production company. Even credit card companies cut him off. Jim Baker was panicking and asked his viewers to bail him out by sending him checks. He said the network could go bankrupt any day now. So why would anyone follow this guy? I wanted to know. So I spent a few days on Facebook trying to convince one of his followers to talk to me. Hi, is this Jean? It is. Meet Jean Chester. She's been a faithful follower of Jim Baker for years. I'm a widow right now. I'm, I'm 66. I live in, I live in uh, Morgantown, West Virginia now. I wasn't born here. I was born a little bit north of Philadelphia. I started out as kind of city slash country girl, and when I, I got here as fast as I could. I, I married a hillbilly and came here and been here pretty much since then. I'm doing a, mm-hmm. a story about Jim Baker, and I don't know mm-hmm. if you heard recently, he was talking about the silver solution. Have you heard of that? Yeah, I use it actually. Oh, wow. Tell me, what do you use it for? I have really bad teeth now. They're kind of floating around in my head. My gums are receding, and I have terribly bad breath, and I have terrible pain. And so after I brush my teeth every day, I switch with silver and swallow it. It keeps the infection down. That's interesting. So, you've actually, able- so it sounds like you've been using silver solution way before this pandemic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Let's go back to the Civil War. They didn't have antibiotics. Silver was what they used to combat infection back then. It has been tested for SARS and MRSA. And it, I mean, these are these are known laboratory tests. The government has tested it. And it actually kills those bacteria. It has not been tested for COVID, which Cheryl Selman, who gets on the show and, and promotes it, she made that perfectly clear. But, you know, people tend to take things out of context and run away with it. And that's kind of what happened. So, like, how mm-hmm. much how much does a bottle of silver solution from, from Jim Baker cost you? Well, it's it's not cheap to start with. I was I was trying when it was taken off the air. I was trying to purchase. They had a case, a 24 bottle case for three hundred dollars. And I was trying to purchase it when I found out that they couldn't sell it anymore. That, oh, they said it, it kills COVID-19. Well, they did not say that. They actually said that it had not been tested yet. 
colloidal silver contains teeny tiny flakes of pure silver and is usually suspended in some form of liquid. But does it actually work? And is it safe? The answer is no. Actually, if you use silver topically, it can actually help acne and help skin wounds heal faster. But there's no scientific evidence coming from any reputable source that this stuff actually works when you ingest it. It can't cure cancer, HIV, and it won't prevent or cure you from COVID-19. Ingesting this stuff can actually have some pretty nasty effects. In fact, the FDA has posted several warnings about it. Do you know that silver can actually build up in your body over time? And then your skin and your eyes and your internal organs turn a grayish blue? It's a condition called Argyria. And it's not like a slight bluish tint to your skin. I've seen pictures of people who literally look like Smurfs. And this condition doesn't go away when you stop taking it. The silver actually stays in your body. They've also found that silver interferes with medication. So if you're taking prescriptions with it, your doctor's drugs may not even work. So let's get back to Jim Baker real quick. What is it about him that that draws you in? Well, to me, he's just a pleasant old man now. But the guests that they bring on, the modern day prophets, the information, I mean, you're getting you're getting information that mainstream media doesn't want you to know. Let me put it that way. What do you think the media gets wrong about Jim Baker? I think that because he has a history of having gone to prison for making some mistakes, uh, he's a target now. Uh, I look at it and I see a modern day Job. So you're telling me that his past criminal behavior, like that, none of that bothers you because you feel he's changed, I guess? He's been restored. He did his time. He paid the price, whether it was uh, legitimate or not. He feels that, you know, he did some things wrong, not knowingly, but unknowingly. But he did pay for his mistakes. And God has restored him. I mean, he lost everything. Every single thing he had. His wife died while he was in prison. She divorced him, but she passed away. He lost his home. He lost his business. He lost his family, his kids. But God has restored him and given him everything back. And people, people want to say, oh, he's just, he's just selling you something. Well, yeah, he is selling you something, but he's selling you something that you don't have to buy it. Nobody's pressuring you to buy it. He gets really good deals, and it's things that you're not going to find anywhere else. And being a, he's a, 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 a product-driven ministry, that's how, they, that's how they make their money to keep everything going, their churches, their Lori's house for the babies. But also his ministry is a nonprofit. So that that's why it's interesting because when you buy Silver Solution, you're not actually buying Silver Solution, right? You're donating money to his ministry? Uh, well, I mean they they've you know, they've got they've got the ministry on T V, they've got Lori's house for, you know, unwed mothers to have their babies. They have uh, they've just recently, in the last couple of years, they built a church. They have the whole campus, let's say, where you can go there and actually live on the property. Do you, do you attend church? I, right now, I go to a uh, United Methodist church. Now, I'm not a Methodist. I'm non-denominational. I'm not even religious. But I have a wonderful relationship with my Lord and Savior. And... I just got so sick and tired of the business. It's like all this money that is coming in, it has to go right back out. And it's like a pyramid scheme. But you're saying that about, you're saying that about your church? Yeah. And, I mean, organized religion as a whole, actually. And, but do, don't you see the irony a little bit, though? Because isn't that what Jim Baker is kind of doing? Um, no, actually. I mean, when the money goes to him, you can see where it's going. When, when I give tithes at my church, m most of what I give goes on to the church up above that and then the church up above that. And I see very little at, through my actual church of what's actually happening. And so you're saying that Jim Baker, you know, yeah, he's selling stuff too. It is kind of a business, but you're seeing the fruits of that business. You're saying Right. It's it 
Yeah, it's definitely a business. I mean, they couldn't stay on the air if they weren't selling things and making, you know, some profit from what they're selling. It's a product-driven ministry. And they make that perfectly clear. Well, I think that people that maybe tune in once in a blue moon and watch get the wrong idea. Basically, he was saying, oh, this solution will totally eliminate it. I think that's where people are drawing that parallel. You're kind of reading between the lines saying, well, it's, it's not eliminate the coronavirus. But could you understand a little bit why people might think that maybe it's a little snake oil salesman-y? Seeing that I, I watch every day, I've actually watched the man getting older. <laughs> and I've watched him searching for his words, which we tend to do as we get older. And I think that people misunderstand the things that he's trying to say. Shortly after several networks dropped his show, the credit card companies cut him off and the lawsuits started rolling in. Jim Baker's new wife, Lori, announced that he had suffered a stroke. Is this the last we'll ever see of Jim Baker? Probably not. So why in the world would anyone believe Jim Baker? After all, he has a documented history of being a con man. A better question is, how does he get away with it? The answer is simple. This pandemic is fertile ground for conspiracy theories. Look, I guarantee that everyone listening to this right now believes in at least one conspiracy theory. In one survey, 54% of people believe that the 1% of wealthiest Americans secretly control government. 50% believe that Jeffrey Epstein was murdered. 43% believe that the deep state is secretly running our country. 20% still believe that Barack Obama faked his birth certificate. And at one point, 80% of Americans believe that JFK's assassination was part of a larger plot. Conspiracy theories aren't bound to any particular religion, political affiliation, or ethnicity. And while everyone is susceptible to falling for these types of misinformation, there's one group in particular who's all in when it comes to fake news on the current coronavirus outbreak, evangelical Christians. I wanted to know why these COVID-related conspiracy theories are so appealing to certain Christians. My name is Joe Terrell, and I grew up in East Texas, grew up in a Southern Baptist church. I, I still consider myself a Christian. I don't know if the junior high version of myself would consider me a Christian. Joe Terrell runs a Christian blog called Instrument of Mercy. I did kind of grow up with the assumption that... The earth was created in six literal days. You know, evolution is a lie. And also we need to be on alert for the end of the world. I wanted to know why Jim Baker believers follow him so blindly. If you look at Jim Baker's website, if you go to his website right now, you know, in his ministry, you will see links to books and talks about how the signs are here and like pointing to the signs of, of the end times for, 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 for Christians. I think we need to understand that when you start believing that like someone can speak for God, if you have a sort of authority figure that could be like a pastor, a preacher, or a pretty famous televangelist personality, once you start believing that they speak for God, kind of like all bets are off there. You're kind of primed to automatically accept what they say is truth. And I want to point out that this isn't necessarily limited to Christians. We all have people that we listen to that we kind of put aside our skepticism for. It's just especially for Christians, for me personally, as someone who does identify as Christian, it does hurt me as a people who are supposed to be known as, you know, the ones who know, quote unquote, the truth, who spread the good news, who who have faith in the gospel, that it really tarnishes our ability to make these sort of absolutist claims while also falling so easily for these conspiracy theories. I was able to interview one of Jim Baker's followers. I started talking to her and I asked her, I said, I found you on Jim Baker's Facebook page. And did you know that Jim Baker, he's been getting into some trouble because he's been selling this silver solution. And shocking to me, she says, oh yeah, I actually use it. She actually buys Jim Baker's silver solution. She's been using this silver solution for a long time. 
even before this pandemic, I asked her, do you believe that COVID-19 is real? And she goes, yes, absolutely. I believe it's real. So sigh of relief, right? But then, then it went south a little bit. She said, no, I believe the virus is real. She goes, I believe that it was manufactured to kill old people. And I asked her, you recognize that that's a conspiracy theory, right? And she goes, oh, yeah, I, I recognize that. So she, she's able to separate these multiple realities. I think I saw a tweet a few days ago where someone made the point of it's so funny that the same people who were acute or, or who were t- telling me to believe that Jesus raised from the dead for Easter are also now the same ones telling me to buy into all these pandemic conspiracy theories. And I think that just really put in a nutshell. It's that if if you're peddling a belief that can be defeated by a three minute fact check on Google, why should anyone put any stock into any other belief system that you're proclaiming? And so when I hear stories of people peddling these miracle cures, you know, the quote unquote snake oil, I have to remind myself that this is sort of part of who we are as a nation. You know, it's this weird blend of like magical thinking and entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah, this is not just a Christian thing. People have been falling for snake oil scams forever. (laughs) But why is it that we're seeing it now, specifically with the evangelical Christians? According to this sort of brand of theology, the world is getting worse and there are prophecies in the Bible that we can look at and we can look at current events and match those current events with what's written in the Bible to sort of predict the future and also sort of predict the end of the world. And part of this end times narrative involves kind of like a one world kind of satanic government. When the end of the world comes, there's going to be this one world government led by the Antichrist, who is like the devil incarnate. You already have this conspiracy like mindset. It could totally just warp the way you approach the world, you know, because if you think the world's headed to hell in a handbasket, you know, your priorities shift. While fewer people are going to church these days, one particular religious movement is on the rise. By some accounts, Pentecostalism is the fastest growing religious denomination in the world. The Pentecostal faith is actually one of the fastest growing branches of Christianity today. You know, in a few decades, Pentecostalism will probably be the most prominent expression of Christianity around the world. So what should people do when confronted with information that is conspiracy in nature, you know, and that they don't know the answers to? A great first step would be for everyone, Christian or not, conservative or liberal, to just be honest about your own sort of cultural biases. No one is free from this. Step one is saying, I can be fooled. And just admitting that to to yourself. And what I tell people is that if you find something on the internet that really resonates with your worldview, that just sort of like fires you up, I always say that's when you need to be the most cautious because it was probably designed for someone exactly like you. My second step would be sort of to like wait, especially with the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, we're seeing these sort of waves of conspiracy theory videos and content interviews kind of come in waves where, where, where you see them circulate through the blogosphere or through social media. And usually if you just wait a couple of days before interacting with it, just kind of wait for the fact checkers to catch up with it. You could probably save yourself a lot of grief. There's this really great verse written by the Apostle Paul to a church in Thessalonica. He says, don't be gullible. Check out everything and keep only what's good. Throw out anything tainted by evil. 
you know, because most conspiracy theories have this sort of like really dark and rotten core. And what's so ironic to me is that if the reality of these conspiracy theories is, is true, like that's a far more frightening reality than the, you know, than, than, than the event the conspiracy theory is attempting to explain. I mean, if the government was capable of, you know, staging mass shootings or inventing a virus to take over the, you know, to take over everyone, the government rights, like, like those are terrifying ideas. And so it's strange to me that people gravitate to these like horrific 1984 style beliefs to explain away something. For me, it's sad because we're in this crisis, the whole world, for the first time in any of our lifetimes, for generations, the whole world is experiencing the same thing, right? When does that happen? And in a time like this, trying to point fingers at the right or at the left and that the doctors or the there's a cure when you know there's not a cure and we're all in this fight together you know it, it, it's kind of sad you know because we want to to get through this right but joe terrell says and all is not lost there, there are Christians out there who are critically evaluating their own beliefs and are trying to sort of jettison what may be extraordinarily harmful to other people and still using like the tenets that Jesus taught to guide their lives in a way that is beautiful and enlightening and inspiring to other people. You know, so much of what we talked about was critical and let's not lose sight in the fact that that's just one segment of a big spectrum of people who, and everybody, all, all these people are good people. It's just right now in a time like this, the reason why I'm doing this show is that I feel like certain people are being taken advantage of. You know, we are in the midst of what is probably one of the most effective public health campaigns in history. Never before have we had the resources to inform as many people as possible as how to stay safe. Wash your hands, wear a mask, be socially distant. Just the fact that you could alert somebody that it's not here yet, but it's coming, you know? I mean, it's like a modern miracle. Like there is something amazing happening here. I may never be able to convince Gene that Jim Baker is a con artist. We both live in the same world, yet we experience this pandemic with completely different sets of facts. I, I just don't, I personally don't see the appeal of, of a Jim Baker. I mean, knowing that he basically went to jail, admitted what he was doing was wrong. And, and you know, and I believe in redemption. And I think that that's actually, you know, one of the pillars of Christianity. But I don't believe in re redemption when you stand back up and then start doing it all over again. Yeah, and I don't, I don't think, I don't think Christianity would call that redemption either. <laughs> you know, especially in regards to Jim Baker and sort of that whole prosperity gospel, which is a particular brand of Christianity that sort of promises health and wealth in exchange for either devotion or sort of donations, yeah, seed money, seed funding, whatever the sort of the terminology is, you know, I think that really is a bastardization of what Jesus taught. According to Jim Baker, if Jesus were around <laughs> right now, he would have his own TV show. We must follow different Jesuses then. <laughs> I want to thank a concerned citizen, Gene Chester and Joe Terrell for taking the time to talk with me today. Also, I want to thank Emily Warner for becoming a Patreon supporter. Indie podcasts like these aren't cheap to produce. If you want to support the show, go to pretendradio.org and click the donate button. By the way, Pretend is still in between seasons. I'm working on the new episodes right now. It's all about trying to disappear in the digital age. I think you're going to love it. The new season will be out sometime in August. Until then, please stay safe. Thank you. 
Creative Power.